Christians have it in their heads that atheists say dumb things, which maybe in my case, I do. Just because I'm a British floating circle and I don't actually have a brain. But one guy put together one of those tier lists of the dumbest things atheists say. And we're about to find out what they are and see them ranked so we maybe only use the good ones from now on. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that watches people make extraordinary claims and then I explain why I don't accept what they're saying. You may have seen these tier lists where folks rank things based on their own opinion. Well, I found a very small channel that's done exactly that, with dumb things atheists say to Christians. These tables go from S, super or superb, and then A to F. And honestly, I'm not sure if F is then the worst dumb thing or the best dumb thing, but I guess we'll find out. But also... The thumbnail for the original video has this guy. Is this what Christians think all atheists look like? I can tell you, the atheists I know personally look like this. What a gorgeous bunch. Not that the thumbnail guy isn't, but you know. Anyway, before we find out the worst and slightly less worst dumb things atheists say, if this isn't your first sceptic video, hit the like, the subscribe and the bell and maybe we can outsmart the algorithm. And a super thanks to those that hit super thanks in some recent videos. New Pitbull and R&BW Cat and Tequila. Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you. More hen. Plus, check out the link in the description or pictures below this video for I Follow the British Floating Circle t-shirts. Right, I'm ready to learn about the dumbest list in the world. As the title suggests, these objections are pretty dumb. But also, these are the most common objections, so if you're gonna go into spaces with atheists, this will be a very useful video for you. So that being said, let's get right into it. Oh, good. I hang out with atheists all the time. This might be very useful. Oh, hang on. I'm not a theist. Never mind. Religion causes wars. F tier. Non sequitur. Just because wars are caused by re people who are religious doesn't mean that God or the religion itself is not true. Pretty simple. Whilst I agree that not all wars were because of religion, there have been some very historical wars that were because of religion. The Crusades in the 11th to the 13th centuries with Christians and Muslims fighting over Holy Land. The Thirty Years' War from 1618 to 1648 between Protestants and Catholics in Europe. And then the Mughal Maratha Wars between Muslims and Hindus from 1680 to 1818. And in those instances, it seemed to be about whose invisible friend was more real. Jesus never said, I am God. So this is more of an Muslim objection is what Muslims usually say and the first thing you got to say back is well when did Jesus say in quotes because remember they're looking for a quote of Jesus saying I am God right <clears throat> well you can just say in response is well when did Jesus say in quotes I am not God never did so obviously the standard is stupid well firstly why would you put in something that Muslims say that's stupid this was meant to be an atheist list but also it's not the first time I've heard well, they didn't not blah blah blah. In a bit of frustration recently, I said that people who study evidence, like lawyers, that conclude that there is a God, can't be great lawyers. Yeah, I know I shouldn't have said it, but a friend whose husband is a very intelligent engineer said that he's often said that there's no evidence to conclude there isn't a God. Well, though, that's not how you conclude things. Saying the butler committed the murder until proven innocent isn't how we reach the truth. I could say that Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe, leave be upon her, never said that she wasn't a God, so therefore, she is until it's proven otherwise. It's the same as Jesus not saying he wasn't a god or whatever. Then you'd go on to how the Jesus said I am and all the other things that he said like forgiving sins that only God could do. Jesus made pretty clear that he was God. Only God can forgive the things that it itself deemed wrong. That's like me saying it's a sin to spell skeptic with a Q. But if you say you love me, I'll forgive you. And I can make it pretty clear just by repeatedly saying that Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe leave me upon her is really the only God because I made it pretty clear. Next, atheism is better for society. I don't think that's even true because atheism has become widespread and now we have a bunch of kids getting their wieners chomped off and a bunch of babies being aborted. That doesn't sound very good to me. What? Of all the dumb things I've ever heard, being atheist has zero to do with wieners being chopped off or babies being aborted. If the wieners being chopped off is a reference to trans people, then you might like to know that nearly half of folks in the USA that are part of the LGBTQ community are religious. And when it comes to 
killing babies, never mind the fact that the Christian God wiped out an entire planet of people, including pregnant women, and also had to have houses marked with blood so as to not kill the wrong babies. But abortion isn't just for non-believers. Maybe non-believers are more open about abortion because they're less likely to be shunned from their community for choosing what to do with their bodies. And of course an atheist can't say something is better or not for society because they don't have any standard to say that by How dare you, sir? I don't need a god to tell me what's good for me or the ones I love. If anything, I'm better at determining than you because I don't need a supervisor to tell me what to do. Uh, Epistemological standard, that is. You're an atheist to 3,999 gods. Going from one to zero is quite a big jump. And there's good reasons to deny all those other gods we come up with the reasons for those. For example, Islam. My reason is Muhammad doesn't seem like a true prophet to me. In other words, in your opinion, not convinced of those stories. I see, I see. Judaism, Jesus Christ rose, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. All these other religions, you know, they... Polytheistic religions, for example. Our arguments for God's existence leave us with a monotheistic God. One creator. Really? 3,999 gods is silly. It's probably closer to 18,000 different gods, goddesses and animals and objects that have been worshipped throughout time. Or if you take into account that each Hindu family has their own god, it could be over 33 million. But hey, listen, only your god is the right one. Next. Or they, they, or they don't even try to make an argument for the truth of the religion. For example, Buddhism. Buddhism just says live a nice life. It's not making a claim like Muhammad is a true prophet, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I don't even know what Judaism's central claim is because I, to refute Judaism, I just say Jesus is the Messiah. <clears throat> Your religion comes from Judaism. <clears throat> God of the gaps. So, okay, let me articulate this properly. When atheists say God of the gaps, not, in God of the gaps, this fallacy was originally created by a theist. Okay, atheists don't use it in the same way the God of the gaps fallacy was originally created for. But when they say they usually you say like when you use God as an explanation, you're just using God of the gaps. But in reality, you could say this about any explanation you come up with. For example, gravity, you do all your math equations or whatever you do, all the nerd stuff you do, like, oh well gravity does this, this and whatever. Yeah, because that's how people observe gravity. Or this exists, this exists, this, this exists like a little nerd. Then you come up to say, well, gravity is explanation for it. The gravitational gravity theory, whatever. Do you know what you're saying? Someone could just come along and say, well, that's gravity of the gaps. Obviously, that's stupid, but that's the type of reason they're using here. No, no, gravity is observable. This is a bizarre way of defending your position, even if you recognize it's stupid. If you use something as an explanation, automatically it's God of the gaps. Does it make sense? But I could see how it'd be somewhat compelling at first glance, so I'll go with D. Uh, no, when something can't be explained with scientific means, instead of saying, I don't know, a believer says, obviously a god. And you're right, it can be filled with anything. Which is why I say it was Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe leave me upon her. Because she's just as likely to have done something unexplainable as your god. Can God make a rock he can't lift? I'll put that in D, because again, it could seem compelling at the start, because he's like, oh, well, it seems like there's, uh, it's the omnipotence paradox, right? But... It's like asking God to make a square circle. Omnipotence doesn't mean you can do the logically incoherence. So the God is bound by rationality? Huh. That would mean it wouldn't be able to come back from the dead then. Okay, asking God to make a rock so heavy he can't lift is a logically incoherent idea. So, doesn't impugn it, omnipotence. It does sound like a cop-out though. Having faith means you deny evidence. F. That's just not true. But why? What? is faith. I understand it to be what people use when there is no evidence. Otherwise, it would be, I have evidence that a god exists, not I have faith a god exists. Never mind the fact that faith can lead you to a not true. Like, you could have faith that you were given magic powers and can fly if you jumped off a building. Don't do that. Evolution. That goes in D. Actually, you know what? Because to me, it's an F. Because evolution is completely compatible with Christianity. But... I feel like to the average person it might be a C. Because when you talk about, when you talk to an atheist, what is the, one of the first things they bring up? Oh, well, evolution theory has completely buried God. It doesn't follow from evolution that God doesn't exist. I'll agree with you there. Evolution isn't accepted by all folks that don't believe in a God. And, other than creationists for sure, a lot of religious folks accept evolution as true. I think it was St. Augustine, I believe. 
who said, you know, there's alternative creation hypothesis that can be made from Genesis. It doesn't necessarily mean exclusively seven-day creation. Next, universe is too big. I don't know what that means, F. Hang on now, not knowing what it means doesn't make it bad. The universe could be infinite. We're one planet orbiting around one sun in a sea of 400 billion suns in one galaxy in a sea of two trillion galaxies just in the bit of the universe we can see. Why would a god only give two poops about this little blue speck? If God, why you look at This is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. That goes in B. So... The answer, because this is the int- especially interesting because this is a big problem for, like, Calvinists, which I'm not. The answer is free will. And evil is a result of misuse of free will. It seems pretty simple to me, but I can see how they'd be a bit unconvincing. Because they may come up and say, well, why doesn't God create people who would freely choose not to do evil? And this is where a concept called, and this is from Alvin Plantinga, this concept of trans world depravity comes in essentially if there is the option to do evil which if someone has free will they have the option to do evil if not then they don't have free will if they have the option to free will then that it logically follows that in a possible world they will do some form of evil so to me that seems to get rid of the problem of God creating someone with free will that wouldn't do anything wrong. Because in some possible world, if they have the option, they will do some form of evil. But what about evils that don't originate from man? Disease exists. Why does that cause suffering when there's nothing the free will holder can do about it? Why does the God pick the free will of, say, a rapist attacking a woman over the victim's free will when her free will is being taken from her? It just doesn't intervene. And third... Is there free will in heaven? Is heaven absent of evil and suffering? Well, if yes, then the God can create a world where free will and no suffering exists. What about the God having a plan? If it gives folks free will, but also knows what's going to happen, then that isn't free will. Why doesn't God just get rid of free will? Well, I would say it's a greater good to have free will rather than not. Because, for example, love. Love can't exist without free will. People can't come into loving relationships with God, come to God freely, if there is no free will, obviously. Hang on, that's not what love is. You have to love the God so you don't go to hell. That's not love, that's bullying. So, I do think free will existing is a greater good. And I don't think we're in any position to say, you know, the world would be better if not. Also, I mean, I already talked about, you know, atheists not really have a standard for good or bad. They know they have it written on their heart. It does say it in the Bible, but as far as within their own worldview, they don't really have a standard. Stop speaking for me. I don't do shitty things because I'm not a shitty person. If the only reason you don't do shitty things is because you think a God doesn't want you to, then you're a shitty person. Next, if God, why do some not believe? I know I'd say the answer is the same as why evil. Just replace it with why do some not believe. Again, this is a problem with Calvinists. Big problem with Calvinists. But someone who affirms free will like me, not really an issue. Though, if that was the case, then it's on the God for me not believing in it, because it would know what it would take to convince me, be able to do whatever it took to convince me, and want me to be convinced. So that's just another cop-out. Religion encourages intellectual laziness. F. Plenty of religious people were intellectual titans. For example, Isaac Newton. I can get on board with that, though the discoveries that these intellectual titans made had no bearing on the truth of their god belief, so... Religious people do evil. That's the same thing as religion. Same same answer. I mean, yeah, that is a little dumb. But what do you mean by evil? Anything that goes against the well-being of society? Sure. And if you look at people convicted of evil and put in prison, how many of those folks are religious versus being atheist? I think it's less than 1% of the prison population that identify as atheist. The cross wasn't enough. For people who affirm salvation by works, that's a problem, but not for me. The cross is enough, so that's just wrong. To be honest, I don't know what you mean by the cross wasn't enough. To keep Jesus dead? Maybe because there's no proof that happened? The coming alive again bit, I mean. Just forgive Adam and Eve. Just forgiving Adam and Eve, like, oh, you're forgived, is not just. God is a maximally great being. God is maximally just and maximally loving. Okay? So... That doesn't work. Did you just make up some words and say, nah, my God doesn't do that, to justify the God being an ass? Why do theists do that? But it's a God and it must know what it's doing. Who am I to question it? I'll tell you, you are worth more than a God that needs your love so it doesn't torture you forever. The universe is fine without God. 
F. I don't know why so many atheists say something like that, because just because, for example, a house can exist without the builder just fine. Like, the builder can die after the house is built, and the house is not going to fall apart or something like that. But it doesn't mean that you don't need to find an explanation for why the house exists, right? Or you could just say, well, forget about the builder, or forget about the potential builder, because the house is fine without. Seems pretty stupid to me. Well, it seems pretty stupid to me that you think houses being built is the same as universes popping into existence. There are non-God explanations for the universe's existence, and it exists regardless of which God or rock or animal you believe in. So gods aren't needed for the universe to exist. 4,000 religions, yours is right. Same thing as what I responded to earlier. And my response is that it's actually closer to 10,000, but yours is the only right one. Convenient, right? No scientific evidence for God. So... My scientific evidence, I mean like empirical evidence. Like, for example, we go Big Bang Theory, the universe began to exist, but that's not good enough for this objection. They want, like, a scientific study showing that God exists. Truthfully, <clears throat> there are plenty of things you believe, and I believe, without scientific evidence. Like what? For example, you don't believe you're hallucinating right now, I don't believe I'm hallucinating, etc. We can't really scientifically prove these things, so... That goes in, probably see, I'd say the same people who say evolution or the same people who say no scientific evidence. Seems kind of compelling, but then you kind of realize, well, you know, where's scientific evidence that you need scientific evidence for something to believe in it? But there are scientific explanations for hallucinations, substance misuse, mental health issues, neurological conditions. Next, Bible has contradictions. That goes in D. It doesn't really matter to me. For example, my position is God exists, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The contradictions they bring up, the supposed contradictions, or maybe actual contradictions, don't really have any bearing on that. Bring that, uh, bring that up with a Calvinist presuppositionalist. I really hope you don't use the Bible to demonstrate things in your day-to-day -day life then, buddy. But good for you for not giving a crap about the Bible. Well, I'm just assuming you don't. Maybe we aren't so different after all. Actually, no, I take that back. No evidence for objective morality. F, which doesn't matter. I do think there's some evidence in that there seems to be a shared morality amongst humans. I haven't really looked into that argument. I don't know if that commits some kind of fallacy, but it just doesn't matter. Objective morality, no evidence, evidence. Who cares? Well, now, people looking out for people without gods. That's the future atheists want, right? Omniscience and free will. Okay, that's an interesting one. So, what these people say is, well... If free will exists, then that's impugned by God's divine foreknowledge. Well, that's just not true because divine foreknowledge is not causative. It doesn't follow necessarily that just because God knows something will happen, that therefore the person is forced to make it happen, impugning on the free will. Necessarily. That's an important word to use there. Cop out. But we've already touched on this, so whatever. Anti-Pascal. So I assume this is like a reverse Pascal's wager. Wasn't really able to find it, but... Maybe if someone was using Pascal's wager, you could try and pull this out, but even then, I mean, that's F. Pascal's wager is pretty stupid, though. You get the, I have nothing to lose by believing in a god. Other than time and money. Make Sundays great again. Skip church. But also, I have nothing to lose. If the god is real, and specifically your god, and I get sent to hell for not loving it, I really don't care. I wouldn't want to worship a bully who gets sulky and punishes me for not loving it. What a horrible creature. Give me hell any day. And I doubt Satan's going to torture me for not loving its enemy. He'd welcome me with open arms. You don't love that guy either? Come on in. Pascal's wager itself isn't a very good argument for God's existence. At most, it could be used as a reason to start looking into whether or not God exists and making your own conclusion. Right on. Tier list got absolutely baked. Pretty simple, to be honest. None of these objections were really that difficult to deal with because atheism itself is not a very intelligent worldview, in my opinion. Ugh. You were doing so well being respectful. And then that. Well, it seems better to me to not be convinced of a god than to be convinced for bad reasons. If you want more information on how to answer these objections, or other objections that aren't on this tier list, join the link in the description, the movement Building Back Christian Men, the Discord. Amazing information there because I'm amazing myself. Wow, watch his head grow. Well, subscribe for more amazing videos, check the playlist in the description and change your life, follow for more... Or follow me on Instagram for amazing posts, website, give me your email, etc. Just do it. I'm amazing. Those are my call to actions. See you next video. 
Amazing. Amazing that not one of the arguments made it to the top of the list. We can add in that no god has met the burden of proof of its existence and therefore it's safe to conclude there are none and put that at S. But then we'll just get the dumb answer of, well, you just have to have faith. I don't know. Nothing here seemed that dumb, but I guess if you say dumb first, it makes them seem dumb and you feel good about saying they're stupid. Good for you. But if this list did seem dumb to you, then let me know in the section below. I'm going to skeptic this as pretty good arguments for the most part. A big thank you to this month's top level ticks on Patreon. Tamo, the barely bearable atheist. George, godless granny. Addy Rockart, the Enixes, Jakari, Elizabeth, Whiskey Tech Fred and Rick, as well as all the $3 base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic. The link is in the description, along with links to all my other socials. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the Skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically, and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday. 